G'day and welcome. Thought I'd give you a bit of an update though. Um, it's 2nd of January and most places are closed for doing bits and pieces, including a good friend of mine who's a plumber. And I've got to continue digging this thing. I've just been a bit slack with it. Got to move this tree and once the 9th of January comes, I think, he's back at work and come and do this. Um, so it has slowed me down, but it doesn't matter. I've still got loads of... Um, bits and pieces of motorcycle and car stuff to upload and I'm almost ready to upload that now but to tie you over well some of you I've restored or at least repaired another household appliance um it'll tie me over for now I guess but anyway look uh sorry about that sorry about the delay and the fact we're going to be quiet I do wish everyone a happy new year and I hope you enjoy right camera chef I bought this uh, 1992 I think soon after I moved at home I thought I'd bake cakes and all this stuff which I never did so you can see it's had very little use but it's kind of manky it's been on the fridge it's got cooking crap all over it uh, one of the problems with it though is I've got this sort of <laughs> hand towel thing to stop oil dripping out of it because it has got a I think the lubricants kind of separated and now you can get uh, what do you call it food safe lubricants and this sort of stuff so you don't want that dripping into your cake mix or whatever you're doing um, and the other thing is Rosie was using it yesterday and it smelled like it was about to blow up. Um, on researching there is a couple of capacitors and a couple of other bits and pieces in there. Um, can I put my other glasses? Here we go. And I'm just going to start pulling stuff off to see what happens. Because I need to figure out, I didn't want to throw it out. Um, I've had it for a long time, but not really used it much. So there's all sorts of information available for these things. But I don't really know much about them at all. Okay, okay. How does that come off? That comes off. It looks like a CD, doesn't it? Um, how do you get this off? Oh, hang on. Bloody hell. I thought I would just take it off, but apparently I'm not going to. Can we take that off? Yes. Well, there's a couple of screws there. Nope. Um, there are people that sort of specialise in these sorts of things, but I'm not one of them. But I'm curious to know exactly what the problem with it is. Um, oops. I've got a couple of these actually. There's one in the shed, I think, that I found at a garage sale. Yeah. Okay, we can clean all that up. That just looks like lubrication, uh, lubricant. There's probably a bit of sugar or something in there. I'm not really certain. Um, Will that let the top come off? Come yeah, I'll just put it down so you guys go. Oh, look. It does come off. Right. Belt. Can I derail that? Yes, I can. Um, gearbox. I've got to take that apart. I've never pulled one of these apart, but I'm sort of keen to, and I'm keen also to see what the problem is with the electricals. There is a box, um, a bracket here. Oh, here we go. And I think this plastic thing comes out. It's got a cable strain there. I'm just going to take that out too. Is that magnetic? Nope. But this is the first time I've pulled it apart. Mum made one years ago and it broke. Um, oh, and she always missed it, and that's what made me think when I was buying a Mixmaster, I would get something that was proven to be very good. Oh, that's handy. Yep, that's a bracket. I'm going to remove this cable strain here a minute. The other thing I didn't know with these is that if you, um, if these feet wear underneath, it stops there, that's where the motor gets its ventilation from. So it's very easy to cook them, or at least compromise their operation. 
Is this thing still recording? It's still recording. Oh, gee. Oh, come on. I might have to, um... I've seen a video on a guy sort of pulling one of these apart. And he... Just withdrew that. It's very clean in there, though. Hang on, I might have to just take that cover off the electrical stuff and disconnect that oops, power lead. Okay. Oh, that does look very spiffy. I've just got to get a screw stick to get in there. Just give me a moment. Do you understand that? I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm not an electrician, but I am an electronics technician. So maybe I think I'm allowed to use um, work on low voltage stuff. Although, if you look at television sets with a flyback transformer, you're getting thousands of volts out of them. But in saying that, low current still give you a nasty bite, though. That's pretty dodgy. I would solder that. Right. Does that little bloke turn off? Yes, it does. But what I am going to do... Oh, I'll just take that block off. So again, this is not a car. <laughs> but I do apologise, because I know people want cars on this channel anyway. Right. Can we take that out now? Yes, we can. Oh, whoops. I'm keen to see if what's blown or what's about to blow there's a couple of caps here and here one of them is a filtering cap for the mains the other one i think is like an induction capacitor and there's a tri there as well so we can change all that i'm just going to pull that motor out by Shit, that's not good. maybe i'll just leave it there like that and take it out by undoing these then I think the motor drops. And then I've got to take the gearbox apart and have a look at that because it is dropping oil. And I've got to look into this food safe stuff. Damn, I'm not working well today. In fact, I'm doing an awful job. I haven't been doing much really. And, you know, it's obvious I think. Now, I don't want to get belted by any of those caps. I'm hoping they're not holding charge. What have we got under here? I'm just going to have to stick my hand there because I've got to catch this thing as it comes out. Because that is going to fall. And given that I've never done this before, I'm not sure what that's going to entail. I think I'll just pull it out like that. Yep, so I do. Sweet. Oh, uh, more spaces. Just a mo Oh, it went under the house. <gasps> oh, no. That's not good. Anyway, I'll have to dig it out. There is a um, a mask of sorts that goes on there. And then these guys here sit in. No, that's complete rubbish. The mask must go like that. Yes, it does. And these guys go in like that. So that's cool. I just saw a washer go under the house. Um, hang on a minute. Just pull that out. And I'll get the gearbox off in a minute. What's up with this motor? Why did this... This actually slides as you rotate it. It slides that whole board up and down. I don't know what that smell was. What was that smell? Let's have a bit of a shticky. Because these are known for blowing. There's an electrolytic there. And there's some of these, but they're not black or brown or anything. That one there looks a bit discoloured. And it's like an electrolytic. I would be inclined to take that board off and change out those components there. This one, this one, maybe the triac. I just don't trust the things. What are the brushes like? Come on, you get off there. Let's have a look at these guys. I'm expecting these to have virtually no wear because it is, um, it's just had very, very little use. I saw one guy pull one of these apart. Yeah, they're brand new. 
I think that goes under. Does that go under? Or does it just sit against it? Hmm. Anyway, I'm just going to put that back on. But interestingly, there's no wear on that. Very little. What's the commutator like? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I actually, I actually don't like some of this double insulated stuff. This is all double insulated, which means it's only got two conductors. There's no earth coming in from the mains. And so you've got this motor, which could be live. I doubt it, but it could be. If it did go live, it's isolated by these, as we sort of looked at before. I'd still see an earth, but, you know, all the screws um, are sort of flush fitted in these fittings here that go inside that. Um, I don't know why Mr. Wood's company didn't do that. Kenneth Wood. Right. So this is different in the the older ones have a, a sort of a chassis along it. The chassis is part of the gearbox on this. So there's just two bolts holding it on here, as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm just going to take that off by doing and doing it the right way. Here we go. It should get all floppy. Yeah, I can feel movement. Um, the thing I don't know though, I'm going to have to figure out because it'd be easy to break, is that um, nylon pulley. We'll have another look at it in a moment. Has this only got two fasteners? Actually, it might not. It might have another one somewhere. Oh, don't say it's underneath that. Hang on a sec. What have we got? No, that should come off. Oh, yes, it does. It's on, it's on dowels. Sweet. We'll keep those dowels separate. Put the case over there, and here's the guts of the thing. So it's got a planetary sort of arrangement. It goes one way in here and opposite, if you know what I mean, to mix all the food up. And the problem is I'm getting oil coming through here, which is not very tasty. Not that I've tasted it, but I don't really want to. Um, so there's a gearbox filler in here, little filling plug, 130 mils, I'm told, of oil. I've just got to work out, because I want to split the gear casing, and I've got to work out what or how to get that off so I can access these. Um, it's very smooth. Whoa, sorry. It's very smooth in its operation. I was going to take that off too because there's a planetary gear in there. I mean, it's, as I said, virtually no use. But it hasn't got its intermediate take on either. So that's the middle speed. That's high speed. Where is it? On top of the motor for vitamizers and this sort of stuff. And then you have your low speed one here for minces and other bits and pieces. So this, uh, some models have another take up there which is intermediate speed. I'm just going to take that off. I don't know what size that is. It looks about 15 mil to me. Just so you know, mechanics doing it. Yeah. We obviously won't reattach it with a rattle gun. But to get it off, it's just easier. So where's this bloody liquid coming from? They talk about food safe grease. That just smells like grease. There's nothing foody about it. It just smells like regular grease. And that's pressed on, is it? I want to use the right stuff putting it back together. You can buy a brand new gearbox, reconditioned one for 90 bucks. Oops, dogs are out. Um, I don't want to do that because this has had no work. So I was thinking of just trying to get those out with a spanner. At least, I think this is just screwed on. But I can't lock the gearbox to, to unscrew it. So I'm just going to pop the others out. And one of the fasteners out so that I can see how long it is. <laughs> Alana's laughing at me. What's wrong here? What's the matter? I was being in the I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're not sorry. Okay, so they're like a self tapper. So no, I'm just going to toil away at this and get them out. Then, whoops. Hopefully, I learned something. <laughs> You're such an idiot. Hi, guys. It's Charlie here. I'm one of um, Dad's kids. Um, Dad's kids. <laughs> I'm really? really? Sorry. 
That was one of my dad's kids. What? <laughs> one of Peter's kids. I'm really sorry for interrupting my son. That was really rude. No, really no, I'll you just don't edit that out. You should be wearing safety boots. In safety gear. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, true. So, yeah, maybe teach that in your little classes. Right, well, I went shopping. Um, here's the base for our machine. Whoops, it's nice and cleaned up. Not completely cleaned, but it's cleaned enough. Um, interestingly, that hood that was over the, where the beater goes has left a huge puddle in the cardboard. That's the felt I've washed out. You can wash these. I've spoken to a tech that did this for almost 50 years. He'd lay them on a kitchen, what do you call it, those paper towels, one each side, fold them over, and again, in a vise overnight and all the oil leaks out of them. But I've just washed that with, what do I use? Degreaser, super cheap auto degreaser. Sprayed it like that, sprayed it like that, waited a couple of minutes, wrung it out in fresh water and it came out like that. Super cheap auto degreaser is known for being really good. Now I bought a few parts, that's a motor cover for an early one, and we'll do a restoration on one. Um, a few other bits and pieces, grey, the, what do you call it, the, where the thing goes, that's missing on the one up front, so I've got those as well, and feet, and their motor mounts for the early ones as well, and of course our motor. Now, these are a good motor, 600 watts, very, very good. The capacitors are the Achilles heel, yeah, and we've got a couple of replacements, we're going to do that resistor in there as well. Now the other thing which Ken was a problematic for is breathing, cooling, and that is brought about by the feet. And these ones are all smudged up. See that? No good. That will, those ones, oh, those two, they aren't too bad, but I'll do them as a set. They use air underneath, which that would have had a beard, um, for cooling in the motor. So. I think the first thing to do is to have a look at these. This one's starting to come apart inside. You can see it on the end, um, but they were smelly. And of course, there's that resistor there, which is too lower in, uh, what do you call it? In wattage. So we've got a larger resistor, right? And we've got the 0.15 and 0.1 microfarad caps. Now, I'm not overly sure with these, if you look at that, it raises and lowers. The earlier ones have a governor of sorts in here that expands and contracts with the speed and that controls the speed as far as I'm aware. They have a, almost a two-stroke sound to them when they're running at the low speed. Dun, 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 dun. They do this sort of thing. This is electronically governed. So this is flush. That one's a little bit, that's probably 30 thousandths above flush. So I want to make sure I get these doing the right thing. The flush one has got that orange wire going to it. This is a bunch of screws around that circuit board. I'm just going to pop that out and have a look. Um, but I'm kind of flying blind a bit with it because I've never done it. Whoops. Okay, they're not very long. Clearly I didn't need to push that hard. Okay. Let's see what happens when I take these out. Right, okay, so this, these go sort of like that, don't they? With the spring. And likewise with you. And that just secures the board. Right. Just leave it there. And that board should divulge the bits that I want to take off, which it does. Right. I'm having a look at this. And I'm going to start with the resistor, I think. I'm just going to... Which one is it? I'm pretty sure it's this guy here. Sometimes we need to add solder to take solder off. melt it. I'm just going to soften the solder with a bit of fresh stuff.
can't get in there because the board wants to walk. Got quite a bit of it actually. Get my braid. It's pretty hot. If you hang on to the braid, you'll know about it. Just to get rid of it. And hopefully that makes the holes nice and clear. You can see the holes around where the terminal is, where the wire is. It's sunburned here. Is that all of it? damage that, um, I don't want to damage the circuit board. Oh, there we go. That one looks a lot better than the other. Where's the other one? Here are the two caps. So, piece those off. Pop this one in. Move these legs in a bit, and then that should be it for the electronic side of it. There we go. Okay. I reckon that's it for the electronics repairs. So we'll put it back together and stick it in the base and switch the thing on and see what happens. If it goes bang, you know I've done something wrong. I'm hoping the exposure's all right because there's a lot of sun coming in and hitting this. Right, so I've cleaned up the base, sort of. Um, move some stuff around, too much junk. And yeah, that needs to be looked at. We're gonna stick this motor in. That goes there, <laughs> but it's got this little mask on it which goes over. And you just these going from the top, so you just got to make sure they're the right way around. It's not. It actually goes that way. And then these little guys will fit in. I'm just going to clean those off. I've just seen something on there. Right, it goes like that. We just feed it up in there that way. If that makes any sense, where the knob is. So I'm just going to guide it up. And then, is it going to be easier to do it upside down? Like that. Maybe. Let's try this way. Where's the hole? You said that before, right? I think it was this way. Right, let's just turn it around and have a look. Not bad, not bad. I'm just going to secure this with a couple of screws. So that's just, all I'm doing is just screwing this down to the top. So this little motor cover has two hooks that go over the hinge pivot. And then it comes down and it's held in with the clasp which closes it there. So, we're going to pop some wiring through it first. Then I'm going to kind of try and drop it down over the circuit board and so forth underneath those pins and then shut it like that. So it goes like this. And we turn it around. Whoops. And that goes in there like that. It's the only way to line up anyway. I'm probably wrong. I'm always wrong. Like the choice of screwdriver I'm using right now, which is too long. Maybe it goes through here. I've left my other one in the garage and I'm too lazy to go and get it. 
I just don't remember that thing poking out before. As I said, I'm not a professional. I'm just a backyard guy. Okay, that does feel like it's very positive. Right, so that should open and close. That's it. Perfect. And that little spigot, spindle, sorry, should be central, which it kind of is. Right, we've just got a wire it and then we can plug it in, turn it on and see what happens. So, there's a cover and some wires to put in there and then we're good. Don't forget, I'm just going to take these out, they're all squashed and knackered. And we can just prise them out. There's actually a screw in there. I don't know, it's just a little fluted pin. Um, I don't know if we're putting fluted pins back. I'm assuming we will, but they just sit like that. Can we get these out? Oh, you can too. I don't know if he's allowed for that. No, he hasn't. It doesn't matter. We can just push those in. Gravity will hold them in place. These look like they're silicon. Apparently they're a soft polypropylene and it snaps as thick as crazy. So I'm just going to pull these out and put the new ones in and then I'll wire it. I love that noise they make, that little... I don't know if you can hear it, hang on. So cool. swept this off and it should be all right now if you look at my cup of tea to separate this Kenwood gear bag um, I think this just screws on as I said before this thing's very very smooth but it um, had a lot of liquidy oil coming out of this area here not from the gearbox I wouldn't think or at least I don't know but I've just broken the seal there's a few places we can lever off it looks like it's just got elastic sort of holding it all together i've not pulled one of these apart before but i'm not tipping it's going to be too difficult okay i'm going to come out which part comes up first oh couple of screws which we know about and that's what i was afraid of right so that's all really wet this grease um so, yeah, I think it was working down the shaft and out um, into the mixing bowl, which it wasn't quite getting in the mixing bowl, but I think it was working its way down here and coming out where the fitting goes. So I'm just going to um, pop that to the side and start cleaning the stuff out. Um, I'm looking for thrust washers. So there's bound to be some somewhere. But this all has to come out now interestingly there's no one there interestingly the um there's one there there's a thrusty they tell you 130 grams of oil or grease or something i went to see a repairman today a, a fellow called neville in his 80s he's been doing this for almost 50 years and he said a couple of tablespoons of grease is ample he had also something to say about the um, the food safe grease that people are recommending for the planetary assembly. He said that stuff has a way of turning into milk after a very short time. It sort of goes all liquid and starts leaking out everywhere. So he just said, use what can we use, which is normal automotive bearing grease. That's what his words were. So it makes a lot of sense to me. 
Um, I just want to take that thrusty out and put that there. This one here is going to have a thrust on it too. Yes, it has. See where it's dripping? This is what I'm talking about. It was horrendous. So I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff and repack it. I've got some lithium, EP2 lithium, extreme pressure. Um, only because that's what I read that people needed to use. Which is probably the right stuff for me anyway because I've run out of bearing grease in here. So we'll clean all these up. It's just a mess, isn't it? There's a lot in there. All right, I'm just going to turn the camera off and get into this, and I shall be back. That um, that was ridiculously easy to get off. It's just a six mil nut or whatever in there. Um, five eighths ring spanner, not even tight. So this is just super cheap auto degreaser. I'm just going to squirt it around, and it'll literally liquefy the grease and clean everything up. What is called? And it'll just hose off or wipe out whatever you want to do with it. Super quick. And those birds, they're nuts, aren't they? Just let that swirl around in there. Clean it out and you're good. It's actually really good stuff. It's only like three bucks a can too. It's cheap as chips. But very effective. Could you use on your driveway for oil change, oil, 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 oil stains and that sort of stuff too. It works really well this stuff. Right. Right, so I've gone around with a bit of brake clean, got rid of everything. Make sure it's absolutely spotless and particularly these um, surfaces here. I've got to get rid of all that residue from prior sealers and that sort of stuff. But the main thing is there's none of the other grease left. There's, there might be a tiny bit in some of the teeth and that sort of thing but I don't think that matters if it's just you know it's as clean as that it's really good um same with this one the other half and I had a really really whoops sorry good spatula to kind of find it right so it's all clean oops we need some of this lithium grease right so what we've got the light's getting a bit poor um I've just seen something in here. I wanted to clean that port out. Hang on a minute. There we go. Um, there's a thrusty on the back of that bevel gear. There's thrusty on the back of that. And there are two here. One there, one there. I think Charlie's being silly. There we go. And then we got this guy. It goes over like that. I'll put a bit in there and a bit around here and I'm just going to use my finger. This is ridiculous. Got more controls with my finger. It's just messy. But it's fun. And this is EP. This is uh, Penrite Grease. That's EP to um, Lithium. Extreme pressure. So that's what the factory would use. I should have this sitting on something, shouldn't I? Oh, let's put it like that. Right, then we've got this bloke here, which goes that way. Again, be generous with it. We don't need to go bananas and so forth, but. It goes there. No, that's complete BS. It goes the other way, you idiot. It goes like that. Right. And then we've got this guy here, which I'm just going to dip the whole thing in the grease and put that there. Sweet. That looks like it's done. Can I put that on something? Not that, obviously. Maybe on this broom. Okay. So, we're going to grease this guy. And that is for the mincer attachment. And it just sits in the front of that. Awesome. Garage thinner. And you can see the last thing I painted was metallic blue. 
Uh, right, this is uh, the thinner left over from my spray gun. The last thing I painted was that colour. Um, I use it, I always use this sort of stuff for cleaning up. And I'm going to go all around here where I'm going to put sealer. Can you see where you are? All around here. Lovely. Lovely. Look at that. Really nice. <laughs> well, it's not really exciting, but you know, I'm getting closer to the end of this thing, so that's always good. I've got so much work to do on the cars too, but so the weather's been too hot, that's why I'm doing this. It's either raining, like the start of summer, we just had nothing but pelting down rain. And then we're right into the summer, it got quite hot quite quickly. So I'm just going around cleaning up any surfaces which look a bit really, a bit dodgy. And then we'll use our three bond. Being a mechanic, I always use three bond. Or I like using three bond. Where's that tube? Um, use it on gearboxes on cars. And this tube is mm, almost spent. I might do it on this side. I might do it here. Because it's going to be easier to see and consequently easier to do. So I'm not going bananas with this. Just putting a bit in. Silicon type products, less is more. The gentleman I spoke to today had a very interesting point, he's right, and I'll show you what the effect of too much grease is. It all comes out the top of the where the juicer goes. The intermediate speed pickup or take up or whatever you call it. And then I sure I want to see a little bit, just a tiny bit ooze out, but I won't see much. Is that even going in? Is that even a screw hole? Ah yes, that's a screw hole. It's not bloody doing much though, there we go. And we're looking for a tiny bit coming out, not too much though. But that's all level, and that should rotate quite well. So I'm going to put the rest of them in, and we'll take a look. Righto. I threw the pulley on, screwed it down, and it was good. A couple of locating dials. Jobs like this are great, particularly if you find yourself, I'm a very busy person, and you kind of get a bit topped out with the amount of work you've got. So you do little bread and butter things like this, and they are so good for you. Because they're fun. It looks like a sewing machine now, doesn't it? And so that's one of the reasons I do stuff like this. It's I I, I really enjoy it. You know. Where's my extension? Where's the original? Um, and the other thing is, it's a sort of a dying thing. You can't get new equipment, and people always say this sort of thing, but new equipment never ever lasts as well as old. These are six years old, and they still have spare parts available for them. Which I think is remarkable. Oh, there's a belt somewhere. Where is the belt, Peter? Where is it? it must be over here. Oh, there it is. You can see how little use this has had. Gates belt, gates are great. Um, I'm a bit of a gates fan. Might be easier to stick it on that bit first, hey? Now the earlier machines had a clutch there. Um, these ones don't. Incidentally, this is the reason you shouldn't overfill your gearboxes. If you take that plug off, that's all grease, hard grease sitting in just under there. And that's never going to be too good. Um, right. That seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we'll just get the top cover. I washed all this stuff before, but I don't remember what I've done with it. Just a moment. Well, that should make it a bit easier. How's the top going? It's just, oh yeah, it's just secured at the back, isn't it? There we go. And it's got like a, where are those bright bits here? It's got that bit, 
And we've got this guy here, but I don't know which screws are those. Are they machine screws? Yeah, they must be these ones. But the only ones I've got left. That's them. Done. Look at this, it works. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. And now, with any luck, it won't leak any oil down through there, which is the main problem of why I pulled it apart. Although, it did start smelling really bad too. It's also got that thing there, but it's broken. And there's a dog at the window. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Take good care of yourselves, and I shall see you soon.